Good day and welcome to today's um, Nexa Solution Insights webinar series. Our first topic that we're going to be covering off in this series is queue management. Um, and what are your queues costing you? Not only from a monetary perspective, but also from a customer satisfaction and employee productivity perspective. We are very happy and delighted to welcome Simon Pearson, who is going to be hosting today's session. Simon is based in the UK, so we have to thank him for coming on online so late at night. Thank you, Simon. Simon has had a long-standing relationship with Nexa as a consultant, as an employee, and as the product specialist at QNOMI, who supplies the QFlow technology. Simon is so passionate about QFlow, it's endearing. And we are so fortunate to have him share his, his knowledge with us today and his passion for all things Q management. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Simon now. Um, thank you all to, to all of you who have come on um, onto this webinar. We appreciate your time and we hope that you gather some interesting and useful insights from this webinar today. Lauren, thank you very much. Good morning to you all. And uh, again, thanks to Nexa Group for allowing me the opportunity just to share some of uh, my insights uh, to you all. Um, I'm going to be running through uh, a couple of things with you. I'll go over a, a brief agenda in a moment, uh, which just outlines some of the key messages that we would like to discuss. Um, also got a, a short demonstration just uh, around some of those key issues, uh, which may uh, provoke some thoughts as well. Uh, open to questions. If anyone wants to pose anything, I'd more than happily uh, give some answers where I can. Um, otherwise, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what we've got to show. Um, as I've put in the introduction there, I'll guide you through what we see as the experience of the journey in the context of today's topic. Um, we're looking at cues in a fashion where um, they can help uh, put your business or paint your business in a, in a positive light, uh, as well as paint your business in, in a negative light if we get the queuing side of things wrong. So looking at the agenda, the, the first item really is around um, the art of queuing and where you can actually get it wrong can impact your bottom line. Um, no one likes queuing. It's one of those um, pieces uh, of a business where um, you, you, if you do get it wrong, then it sets the wrong expectation for the customer right from the off. Uh, and that can lead into negative services and uh, negative feedback uh, on your business. So what we want to do is have a look at how we can uh, potentially use queue management in order to uh, change that negative connotation into a positive experience for customers. So we're going to look in, uh, have a look at first in, first out methodologies um, that can give you that, that basic management uh, on your queues uh, and look at some of the technologies uh, around um, the, uh, the flow of customers uh, for those queues. We're going to look at a couple of advanced topics or what we perceive as advanced topics as well, um, just around how we can do some load balancing. Queue management can be something very simplistic, that one-to-one that -one interaction where somebody has waited in a, in a line gone to the, the, the counter, receive some service and leaves. But what happens when you do multiple services in, in a larger service center? How can we um, make sure that we optimize uh, your service center to be more efficient within those queues? Um, and finally, we're going to talk a little bit about something called decentralization of the waiting experience. And this is where uh, we step outside some of those um, interruptive hardware technologies uh, and use the mobile world to achieve a better sort of interaction for your customers. So again, we're going to focus on um, the experience uh, of those customers, uh, but as well as the operational efficiency of your service centers in order to provide a, a better uh, queuing experience. Um, Chapbook Meister, um, who uh, is one of the uh, most foremost authorities in professional services and consulting, um, provided some insights as to why customers don't like waiting. Um, and what the uh, results are of when they do have a, a bad waiting experience. Um, this was actually published in a, a Nexo white paper very recently and flows very nicely into the topic that we need to discuss. Um, people do find waiting provides them with uh, an opportunity to uh, have an expectation either met or, or not met. Um, and so for us, it's all about ensuring that we can uh, meet those expectations um, it does mean that when we're looking at queue management, we're not necessarily trying to uh, reduce the waiting time a customer has got, but we're trying to reduce the perceived waiting time that a customer has got. And in doing so, that will provide them with the right expectation to receive the right experience as well. Um, if any of you want to have a look at these um, 
items in more detail. Again, there is a, a white paper around this, which we'll certainly provide you a link for. Um, I did mention that I was going to do a short demonstration and I want to introduce Qflow to you. Qflow is a technology, as Lauren mentioned, that I've been working with for about 10 years now. Um, it does a lot more than just queue management, but in, in the context of today, we're just going to uh, speak about that, that uh, first in, first out and um, interaction uh, management piece. Um, Qflow actually comes from a company called Qnomi. Um, and actually has its uh, history in IVR, where for any of you that have phoned up your bank and have uh, had to dial a, a one for um, one department, a two for a second department, you'll understand the concepts of that, that virtualized queuing. And what Qflow does is bring that to the face-to-face -face market. Qflow allows um, the customers uh, of, of our clients to have a look at all of the issues that David Meister has introduced um, associated with queuing and waiting uh, and really harness the power of technology to um, provide better experiences or set those expectations correctly. So we're going to have a look at this, this first in first out style um, service, but we're going to do so in the context of a customer journey. And uh, for the customer journey, I've got this lovely wheel up, which has a look at five key areas. I'm going to be demonstrating three of these areas, but it's worthwhile having a look at all of those five uh, steps. So whenever we're looking at doing an interaction with a customer, we'll always start with um, that uh, piece before they come to the branch. Why are they coming to branch? And try and harness them, uh, the, the powers of the internet to tell us they're coming uh, to the branch before they actually arrive. So there is a piece uh, in the customer journey that allows for this scheduling approach. Um, now we're not covering appointments in this particular webinar, um, but it's certainly worth recognizing that that is a great entry point um, to any uh, service that the customer may wish with your brand. The bit that we're interested in is what happens when they actually arrive in your service locations. Now, the first thing that they're going to do is want to interact with someone or something to say, hey, I'm here, I have arrived. And this is a great opportunity to answer two, que two key questions. The first one is, who is that customer? And the second one is, why are they here? Now, the first one helps us identify that customer and helps us identify their history with the brand. If we can swipe a card or get them to enter a membership number or, or simply put in their name, already we can identify with who that customer is. The second key question is, why are they coming for that particular service? And this is absolutely critical. If we know why they're coming for service, we can better prepare for that service uh, and we can give ourselves an opportunity for our staff to prepare for that service as well. And that's a key component when dealing with um, unusual situations where you might need a, a key skilled member of staff to deal with a particular type of inquiry. For that reception, we can use a number of um, technologies, um, self-service technology, so your traditional kiosk where we can take a ticket through to some face-to-face um, -face technologies where you have a concierge that's standing there with a tablet able to take these questions. There are other methods as well. We can use mobile applications or um, certainly harness uh, the online technologies to get the customers to do that check-in themselves. So this reception area is all about understanding who that customer is and why they're coming for the visit. Once they've uh, announced themselves uh, to your brand in the service center, they're going to do the thing that everybody doesn't like doing, which is they're going to have to wait. Now, in terms of setting uh, uh, the expectation with the customer, we often um, hear people talking about, well, can I tell them how long they're going to have to wait? This is a really, really difficult thing to do quite often you want to give them that, uh, well, you can be waiting for two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes. And whilst that can seem to be a good idea, it's often not a good idea in practice. For us, if you give somebody that expectation that they're gonna wait two minutes and they end up waiting more than that two minutes, maybe five, six, seven minutes, you've already breached their trust. You've broken trust with the customer. So it's always a good idea to have a look at other options, such as how many customers are in front of us. Not necessarily what the average waiting time is, but what's the maximum waiting time for that service center for today, uh, which gives you a fighting chance of at least getting that waiting time right. Once a customer has waited, and maybe we've given them some information through some digital signage, we're gonna call them for service. And this call can happen in a number of ways. We can do a visual alert, we can do an audio alert, or we can text the customer to say, come to a particular service window. And we'll have a play around with that within the demonstration as well. The fourth area in the customer journey is about the interaction. And this is where your staff, you, you, you trained, you skilled, 
uh, members of staff are going to deliver the actual service. But all the while, we're able to log in the background what is going on during that interaction. This is useful for um, both reporting purposes for historical needs as well as for future planning purposes as well. That service time is a, a key metric in any queue management environment. If we want to be able to set the right expectation with our customers in the future by, I don't know, changing our service environment, we need to understand what happened during the service itself. A final stage, which we're not going to cover today in any great detail, but it's always worth noticing, what, what happens after you've had that interaction? Um, the customer's left the branch, is at the end of the interaction in its entirety? Do you want to follow up with the customer? We've got the opportunity here to um, use uh, Qflow as an example, to send out a survey, garner some feedback from that customer, or even perhaps arrange for a follow-up visit to occur. So within that customer journey, everything we've talked about can be managed by Qflow. And what I'd like to do is step through um, some of those areas, particularly the arrival side of things and the waiting side of things and also the interaction side of things and maybe look at some other stuff as well uh, directly through our application. So I'm going to uh, change screens. Um, so forgive me for a minute while I just uh, flick out of this one. Uh, and what I'm actually going to do is bring up um, something called Qflow onto a screen. Um, I'm not going to start with the application itself. I'm going to start with a, a screen which is imitating what a, a kiosk could look like. A kiosk being that, that self-service technology where we can ask customers to identify who they are uh, and why they're coming for the visit. Um, you can see at the bottom I've got some uh, different languages um, to, to give customers different options on how they want to interact. But I'm going to go ahead and um, use this as if it was a touch screen in a branch on a kiosk and say, I am a customer and it's going to ask me to identify myself. That identification can be done either by um, swiping a membership card uh, using that magnetic swipe readers um, or by entering an ID, which is what I'm going to do in this particular instance. So it knows who I am now and it's given me three options, three different services that uh, this particular site is able to give. And I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, I'm here to talk about uh, some council tax. Um, and it's going to give me a confirmation message. You are waiting for council tax walk-in and you're number one in the line. Now, at this point, we can also print out a ticket just to give the customer some uh, reassurance that they are being seen. Uh, it will have potentially a ticket number on it or their name on it or something else. Uh, and the kiosk's just refreshed itself back to um, the initial screen. I can go ahead and say I'm not a customer yet. If I don't have an ID, if I don't uh, want to identify myself with the business, I have that option as well. Uh, and I can again do the same thing, say that I'm here for council tax and I'm now number two in the line. So these are some, some basic um, pieces of self-service technology. But what happens if we want to not use self-service? What happens if we want to use um, something like a concierge? Well, we do have options for that. And one of the options I want to do is show you that within Qflow itself. Now I have an option, um, this is a Qflow, this is our application, uh, and I have a number of options on configuring Qflow as well as using Qflow from an agent perspective, which is what I'm going to act at. And I'm going to use something called a, a reception console in order to uh, check somebody in for service. Now some of the um, terminology on here may be unfamiliar with you, but you may recognize instantly um, some of the options that were presented on the kiosk. For example, the council tax walk-in was presented on the kiosk, as was the housing solutions and the blue badge. Um, I can also identify the customer at this point if I wish, so I can search for a customer. Uh, I've got uh, Jane Bloggs here, and Jane wants to walk in for, uh, again, the council tax service as well. Um, and I've got some options as a concierge to do um, maybe a little bit more than perhaps what a self-service kiosk can do. Uh, for example, uh, I can take some free text. But I can go ahead and again, um, in queue or arrive that particular customer and it can print a ticket or I could just tell the customer, hey, you're in the queue, position number three and your ticket number is C505. So we've looked at two methods of um, uh, in queuing a customer, if you will. Um, there is a third one uh, which um, we can do, which is through a mobile application. And what I might actually do very quickly is just share my screen from my mobile phone. If you just bear with me a second. All right. So 
Um, I have a mobile phone, uh, which is sitting on my desk, so forgive me for looking down for a minute. But what I can see on um, this particular uh, mobile application called My Visit, uh, which allows me to um, interact with certain um, organizations, I've got here something called uh, Q Council, Council Tax, which is relevant to um, the service that we're seeing. And I can see that uh, Council Tax is one of the option, uh, and I can see that there is a two minute wait time. Now, again, if we have a look on the right hand side within uh, Qflow itself, I can see that there is just over a, a two minute wait time at the moment. So I can choose to set that perceived wait time with the customer or not. What I can also do is um, I can come along and I can start entering, like you would on a kiosk, um, certain identifying information. Uh, it'll ask me what I'm here for. I can say a benefits review. Uh, and uh, it may ask me for um, my email address or whatever, whatever. Uh, and I could go ahead and I could uh, enqueue myself from there and so on, okay? So we've got three ways of actually putting somebody into the queue. So what does the queue actually look like? I'm gonna use something called our service console uh, to see what's happening in the queue. And I can see that I've got three people waiting uh, within the, the council tax queue. Uh, I can see there's um, Simon Pearson, who we identified at the kiosk. I can see there's an unidentified customer who also checked in at the kiosk, but chose not to identify themselves. And I've also got um, Jane, who uh, we saw as a concierge as well. So here's a ni ni nice, neat queue. Now, serving these customers is quite simple. We can just click on next. Now, in the concepts of first in, first out, this is gonna be quite simply uh, the customer that has been waiting the longest. And I can see that Simon Pearson, uh, he arrived um, at uh, 12 minutes past 10 uh, in the evening. Forgive me again, I'm in the UK at the moment. So I can click on next and it will open up um, Simon as a, a case. Now, in terms of the agent who's using this screen in front of us, they've clicked next to call that customer forward. What does the customer see? Well, the customer can see again, on the uh, customer information screens, on the digital signage, a pop-up to say, um, hey, please come to uh, counter number one. We can also send a text message to uh, this customer to say, please come to counter number one. And we can also send an SMS customer, uh, an SMS message to the next waiting customer to say, um, please prepare to uh, be called for service, just in case they're not in that locality as well. Um, and what I've got, again, I'm just going to see if I can share my mobile phone with you uh, briefly, um, which I might just have to switch it back on again. Fantastic. And you can see I've actually received a text message saying, uh, dear Simon, you've been called for service. Please go to the relevant service point. So I've got a, uh, an SMS message uh, in this instance instead of um, a, a pop up on a, uh, a digital signage screen. So I'm just going to um, complete this service. I've, I've done with this particular person. I'm quite happy that I've given them the service they require. They drop off the list and I can see I've got uh, two more people waiting. Now this service console is great for those people that have got a desktop computer, but quite often it's not the case that you are sitting at your desk behind um, a, a computer screen. And we have other options um, for serving our customer. And one of them is the ability to uh, be a roaming agent, similar to the concierge aspect of somebody bringing people um, into the business. We can also serve them using uh, what we call a mobile console. So what I have got on screen here, uh, if I just maximize this, is um, almost a repetition of the service console, but suitable for a tablet format. And I can see um, that I've got this council tax walking queue with two people waiting. And I've also got other services uh, within my service center that I've started to be able to see. Now I want to go ahead and I want to call the next person waiting and I can see that it's C504. So I'll go ahead and call that customer for service. And I can start to see some of the, the service details that have come about. Now, from an interaction perspective, this also gives us an opportunity to, again, capture some information about the visit whether that's free text fields or whether that's choosing um, certain uh, transactional classifications to say um, this was a successful visit or this was not a successful visit. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, complete this particular customer and away we go, we're on to uh, the next customer from there. So we've got two particular ways of serving customers, either sitting behind a desk or via um, mobile technology. You'll notice that I've all of a sudden started to bring up these 
additional services. Um, now, if I just flip back to the service console, I can only see one service here. Why am I all of a sudden seeing more than one service? And there's a very good reason for that. When we're talking about this first in, first out concept, we're talking about customers that are coming in for a particular service, in this instance, council tax. But what happens if somebody doesn't want to talk about council tax? What happens if somebody wants to talk about a blue badge, for example? Now I'm gonna switch views to something called grouped by service. So I can actually see that I've got more than one service that me as an agent, I'm skilled to serve in. This is almost like a filter. We can see that I have got capabilities of seeing all these different services. So what happens if somebody starts queuing for this blue badge service? Well, let's put somebody into the blue badge queue. I'm going to say I'm not a customer yet and I'm here for a blue badge application and I get my ticket and I'm number one in the line um, and I'm now waiting for service. I'm also gonna go ahead and have another customer queue themselves also for the council tax queue. And if I just wait for our kiosk just to refresh, I'm gonna go ahead and put somebody else in the council tax queue as well. So now I've got um, three customers waiting. I can see that I've got Jane Bloggs who's still in that council tax queue. And I've also got that blue badge application and uh, the second council tax walk-in uh, customer as well. Now, me as an agent, so I'm Simon Pearson, I'm sitting here and I can see all the cases that are open. And I can go ahead and I can call the next customer and it will choose between these different services, the person that has arrived uh, in that first in first out fashion that's been waiting the longest. So what about if I was a different agent? What about if I was, for example, Kelly Smith? Now, Kelly Smith, she has got the ability also to serve blue badges and council tax. What about if I was David Jones? Well, David Jones doesn't have the ability to serve any of those queues. They aren't within his skill profile. So all of a sudden, we've got three different types of agent. We've got a manager that can serve all types of services. We have Kelly that can serve the blue badge and the council tax. And we've got David that, or Dave Jones, who can't serve any of these. This allows us that opportunity to do what we call load balancing to improve the efficiency of the services. By doing load balancing, it means that we can prioritize customers in a way where perhaps priority services can take precedence over less priority services. And how we do that is by setting, well, who actually uh, would get to um, serve these services based on their skill profile. And also we can set priorities within the system settings to give something a, a greater precedence to be served. That removes that first in first out moniker and gives you a much better balance um, to serve the customers that are potentially revenue earning or should actually uh, be seen before others as well. So we've talked quite a lot about this, uh, the arrival, we've talked about the waiting, we've talked about being called, we've talked about uh, the interaction now, capturing certain details, but also doing the low balancing and priorities. And that effectively are the core areas of doing UQ management. Um, I'll be happily to, uh, happy to take questions around uh, these particular areas um, after, the, uh, after the presentation. Um, there was uh, another particular area um, of the, the, uh, the Qflow system that I wanted to um, talk about. Um, we've got the ability to have a look at um, staff planning. Now staff planning is where we have a look at historical data to ascertain how many of these agents do we actually need to be serving in order to meet our targets. Now we can see on the right hand side we've got some waiting time that's accruing. We've done some services which have accrued some service time as well. Um, but what we really want to know is, are we actually meeting those targets? And how many staff do we actually need to meet those targets? So Qflow's got the ability to do that. We have something called a staff planner. Uh, and the staff planner allows us to um, have a look at all the different services uh, and do some analysis based on that. So I've created a, a test sheet to be able to look at um, something called demand to have a look at previous demand on the services and I put some dummy data in for example uh, earlier this month to say well on the Monday we had a crescendo of customers coming in building up from nine o'clock up till um, 12 o'clock in the afternoon and from there I was able to calculate the required staffing based on uh, my um, KPIs that have been preset within the system. 
Uh, and we can see here that it tells me that I need three members of staff in order to meet my service and waiting times at nine o'clock, three at 10 o'clock, four at 11 o'clock. But all of a sudden it jumps up to 22 at 12 o'clock. Now it's red because I know that I don't have 22 desks in my business. So I can go ahead and cut off those unfeasible values which will reduce it down to the number of desks within my business. And I can, from there, I can calculate the predicted waiting times. Now, that all sounds quite complex. What is its purpose? What is its benefit? All of a sudden, you are able to see, A, how many staff you're actually going to need in order to meet your waiting times, and B, what the projected waiting times are for your particular business. This helps you be pro proactive in communicating with your customers, perhaps when they should be coming to the branch or not. It gives you another benefit as well. If you can see what the trends are within your branch, could you consider moving on to something less first in first out and more appointment led and do, to, do away with the queues altogether? And that's uh, something that we are going to be touching on in another webinar hopefully as well. Um, so that's it from a, a, a demonstration perspective. Um, I did promise to cover one more subject, which I will do very briefly. Uh, and I'll do so from, again, the service console. Um, we talked about um, some feedback after uh, actually having a service. Uh, and you can actually do that within Qflow. We can generate something um, called online forms, which send surveys to customers once they've finished a particular interaction. So if I have a look at Jane, for example, I'm able to actually generate what we call an online form. And that online form can send her um, a survey as an example. Um, oops, I'll just generate that. Um, so we've actually sent uh, Jane what we call a case customer survey. And that is just literally uh, what we call uh, an online form that, um, oops, Uh, allows her to um, record the feedback um, uh, of her, her particular journey. And I'm just going to see if I can go to that URL. So during Jane's visit, uh, we're going to ask her some very quick, uh, simple questions. Uh, why did you visit today to receive uh, some service? Did you achieve everything you wanted? Yes. And uh, would you recommend us? Uh, with some comments afterwards. Um, now, all of that information can be captured within Qflow. We can start doing surveys based on this as well. It's just another part of that, that customer journey. Okay, so that's enough on the demonstration. I'm sure you'll uh, have some questions on, on that, and I'm uh, more than happy again to, to answer any of those. Um, there is a facility within uh, the, the Zoom application for you to uh, post your questions for me to, to have a bit of a read on. So there's, the, um, there's a bit of a recap on uh, a demonstration. Um, I wanted to also just recap on a couple of key points um, relevant to the agenda items. Uh, the, the first thing um, I want to say is about the perceived waiting time. Um, we're not trying to just get that waiting time down. We are trying to get this perceived waiting time down. So we're going to use a number of tools. We're going to set the right expectation with the customer. We're going to give them a waiting time which is relevant to them, or we're going to tell them how many customers are waiting in front of them. And we're going to hopefully get them to wait less than that expectation that we've set so they have a good customer uh, experience. Um, again, it's not just about the waiting, but it is about the service. We have to make sure that the experience is good for the whole customer journey. So we're gonna deal with that customer in a way where we're giving them the right agent, the right skilled agent at least, um, and we're gonna give the agent the tools in order to interact with the customer. The agent knows who they are, they know why they come for the visit, they're already prepared to, to, to give a, a, an excellent service. Um, final comment just about this, um, I, uh, I read a fantastic book uh, at the end of last year called Black Box Sinking over the Christmas period. Um, and it actually gave me a lot of insight into the whole test iterate and test approach um, in order to make improvements uh, within any area of business. I found this very relevant to uh, the queue management side of things. We wanna be able to change the way that we deal with customers on a regular basis. And that means giving people the tools to be able to um, perhaps change their approach. And Qflow really does do this. It allows you to either provide a, a self-service channel or a concierge channel or an SMS channel, all these different channels that can be tested within your environment. And Qflow also gives you a lot of information and statistics uh, about those particular um, tests that you can potentially perform as well. Um, 
we did have a bit of an open forum, um, so allowing you to uh, ask some questions. Um, now, I, I don't think I have seen any questions answered at the moment. Um, Lauren, I don't know whether you've got any comments uh, or questions that you want to contribute and ask here um, to sort of give you a, a chance to ask on topic. Perhaps you can contribute to what your situations are where queue management systems can help, uh, or perhaps share your, your insights as to how much queues are costing you. Um, Lauren, I don't know whether you've had any questions come through uh, whilst I'm talking. Thank you, Simon. I did have a couple of questions um, that came through, a couple on email prior to the session. So I just thought I'd ask you those um, quickly and we'll see if any more pop up during the session. Um, one of the questions I had was which check-in method is being used more, um, more widely in organizations and is there one that's better for a particular organization than another? It's a really good question. I think people historically associate the, the check-in process um, with in two particular ways. Um, number one is using uh, what we call that self-service technology, so where you have got a kiosk. Um, I mean, if you go to uh, any retail environment, uh, uh, like a supermarket, you'll typically find those deli counter tickets. And that idea has been um, uh, really taken forward with the the, the whole check-in process. Healthcare particularly is keen and uh, public services are particularly keen on using self-service technology. In retail it's less about the self-service and more about the uh, personalization of the service and that's really where the concierge side of things can help. So we're seeing um, not necessarily one favored over another um, across the board but certainly within the industries, we're seeing different technologies uh, being harnessed. Thank you, Simon. That's really interesting. Um, you did, you touched on appointment scheduling and there was a question relating to the benefits of appointment scheduling over walk-ins. Are there again, industries that are more um, inclined to have walk-ins as a preference or is appointment scheduling always the preferred method? I really think that that depends on the type of service you're giving. In some instances, you can have a blend of both. You can have um, the ability to have both uh, walk-ins and appointments happening at the same time. Um, again, healthcare is a great example of that. You can take something like an emergency department. You're pretty, pretty likely going to have uh, uh, walk-ins in your ED as opposed to people who want to uh, schedule themselves into emergency rooms. Um, but again, there are opportunities to identify potentially um, regular people um, that uh, visit ED on a regular basis, not because they've broken a limb because they've fallen over and had an accident, but because um, they potentially know that they're going to receive service in that particular environment. So having that blended approach is, is often really good. Um, I also see that there is a trend moving towards um, the appointment-led approach because it gives you that consistency of um, service. You know who your customers are, you know what the volume is going to be, you can give a better service if you do provide them with an appointment. It gives the customer as well a better experience. They feel like a VIP, a bit of a rock star when they turn up and they already know that uh, hey, uh, they are expected um, by a particular agent as well. Uh, and I think that that is certainly something that um, from a trend perspective I've seen happening in the industries um, that I work in. Thanks Simon. Everybody likes a bit of rock star treatment when they Absolutely into branches or into service-based organizations. And um, we had a question, another question. Um, how does QFlow handle wayfinding? Oh, very good question. Um, there are good scenarios where wayfinding could be very beneficial, particularly in large uh, service organizations. Hospitals is a great one. Um, where do I actually go to receive my service? Am I waiting in the right area? Um, do I have an opportunity to uh, you know, go elsewhere within the facilities before I, I receive my service. Uh, and, and yes, QFlow can help in all of those scenarios. Um, again, wayfinding can be done um, electronically through a mobile phone or by um, these, these flight information boards, as I've seen them called previously, where um, you can tell a customer right from check-in where they need to go to receive their service or indeed to wait. Um, we've got a great example in healthcare where we talk about decentralization of the waiting experience. Um, healthcare uh, are reducing 
the waiting area. They're shrinking those waiting rooms, shrinking the number of chairs and asking their um, patients to go and enjoy the more retail oriented facilities in some of the newer hospitals. And that's brilliant. What QFlow can do is it can keep in touch with those patients, keep communicating with them and telling them where they need to go and when they need to go to that place, either by giving them visual representation, maybe some maps or something, or via that um, that verbal uh, or, or or kind of a bulleted list of how to get to a particular location. Thank you, Simon. Um, one last question, just regarding load balancing. Um, obviously, that makes a lot of sense. How easy is that to implement using Qflow? It's very simple. And there is the understanding piece that um, any organization has to do up front. Um, you got to understand what skills you've got within the organization and what you actually want to achieve with load balancing. We are talking about prioritization of cuts, which could theoretically be quite a touchy subject. Why would I want to uh, potentially prioritize one customer over another? That's going to be very unique to your organization. The actual um, setup of the load balancing and the understanding of it can be quite simple, but there are some fundamental questions you need to ask yourself as a business before you seek to, to put in that load balancing. But once it's in, it can give, again, that operational efficiency that something like a simple first in, first out couldn't do before. Thank you, Simon. I think that is all the questions we have um, on today's topic, queue management. Um, we have another, um, another series or another webinar coming up next month on um, appointment scheduling, how to get people from clicks to bricks and how to manage the online appointments through to in-store arrivals. And we'll be welcoming Simon back for that um, session towards the end of the month. There'll be more information regarding that. So thank you again, Simon. There will be a hard copy of the presentation made available, as well as a recording of this webinar. So thank you to all of you who've um, come online to listen. And thank you again to Simon, who's, who's taken a chunk out of his evening to share his very valuable knowledge with us. Um, no problem. From Nexa, a big thank you. Have a great day.